And UNICEF says an aid truck in Gaza was hit by Israeli fire. The team was crossing through Rafah to bring food and medical equipment to civilians. This comes just days after an Israeli airstrike killed seven World Central Kitchen aid workers and amid growing pressure for Israel to allow more aid into Gaza. Hi, Diane. Well, UNICEF says a vehicle waiting to enter northern Gaza was hit by live ammunition, three bullets hitting the car, which they say was clearly marked with the UN logo. Now, this again raises concerns of Israeli military conduct following that deadly aid worker attack on the World Central Kitchen workers just last week. Now, UNICEF is saying they've raised the incident with Israeli authorities, adding that humanitarians continue to face risks in their work to reach people in need. Now, according to our reporting here, Israel also also announced a new crossing directly uh, into northern Gaza has been opened up, but saying Erez crossing uh, will not be opening as expected, although it's not really clear why yet. Israel has boosted aid into Gaza since the tense call between President Biden and Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, sending in the highest numbers uh, of aid into Gaza since the war began. But aid groups saying it's still not at the pre-war levels, which were around 500 uh, trucks a day. And really, aid groups also question questioning why these measures to get more aid into Gaza were not taken earlier. Diane? All right, foreign correspondent Britt Clenet, thank you. And UNICEF spokesperson Tess Ingram was in that convoy when this happened. She joins me now from Rafa with more. Tess, how are you and your team doing and what can you tell us about that moment? Yeah, it was really shocking, Diane. We were um, at a holding point, a designated holding point, where we had been instructed to wait before approaching the Wadi Gaza checkpoint, which is the main access point to get into the north of Gaza. We were there because we were trying to bring life-saving aid, including nutrition supplies, for the malnourished children in the north, uh, up to the north of Gaza. But unfortunately, our mission wasn't able to go ahead. What happened was we were waiting and then gunfire broke out in the vicinity. It seemed to come from the direction of the uh, checkpoint and be directed towards civilians who were just to the east of us. The civilians then turned and, and fled away from the checkpoint in the other direction. Unfortunately, our car was hit, three bullets, uh, two on the side and, and one on the hood of the car. But fortunately, everyone inside was okay. Tess, what's the feeling right now among aid workers after this incident and that deadly strike on World Central Kitchen aid workers last week? That tragic incident, I think, sent shockwaves through the humanitarian aid community here in Gaza. Of course, it's not the first. We know that almost 200 humanitarian aid workers have been killed since October but it was a reminder of how dangerous it is here and how the processes that are meant to protect us are clearly failing. Uh, there's coordination systems that aren't working and this, what happened to us on Tuesday is, is yet another example of that. So we need assurances that this is not gonna happen again. Now, I know you've been in Rafa uh, since what, April 1st now. What is it like there and how worried are you about a potential ground invasion there? I'm really worried and everybody that I talk to here is, is worried. They've heard the news and I think that hope is slipping out from under people, which is really tragic. Um, there's nowhere left for them to go. There is nowhere safe in Gaza and that's really true. When you go further north, you see it, you see the scale of destruction and I, I would hate to think about what would happen to the people of Rafa, more than a million now, if they were forced to leave. How challenging is it right now to get aid into Gaza? What are you seeing that you feel like maybe isn't getting reported? And what are you doing to try to get around that? So I think the best way to explain this is that everywhere we turn, there's another challenge, that none of this is easy and we're constantly being hampered in our work trying to bring aid into the Gaza Strip and then distribute it across Gaza, particularly to the north, as we saw on Tuesday. One of the things I think is important to note is that there are 1,200 trucks waiting outside to get in, backlogged, because the screening process at the border is so complex. We really need to speed that up. We need to give UN agencies better access to collect the supplies once they're ready for us. And we need to make sure the situation on the ground is safer for us to distribute that aid, safer for us and for the people that we're trying to serve. 
All right, UNICEF spokesperson Tess Ingram. Tess, thank you. And we do want to note that when it comes to that World Central Kitchen aid worker attack, the IDF called it a grave mistake, saying it was not carried out with the intention of harming World Central Kitchen aid workers.